Welcome to the seventh video on the Unit 12 playlist of our Chemistry Matters series. In this video, we'll provide a quick recap of the content covered in Unit 7, solutions, acids, and bases. In Unit 7, we learned how solvents dissolve ionic and covalent solutes, whether they're solid, liquid, or gas. And we found that there are several ways to increase the rate of dissolution of the solute by the solvent. Stirring, increasing the temperature, increasing the surface area of the solute, and increasing the pressure. Our laboratory work showed that we can graph the solubility of solutes to create solubility curves for all chemicals. We even found that it's possible to supersaturate a solution with solute so that the solute comes out of solution very readily. In our classroom, our students discovered that ions are dissolved in water are electrolytes and are capable of carrying electric current, while covalent compounds such as sugar are non-electrolytes. Our students measured the concentration of solutions by mass percent, molarity, and molality. Since molarity compares moles of solute to liters of solution, its value is dependent on temperature, unlike mass percent or molality. We explored how to dilute solutions to form new solutions of precise molar concentrations. Our students made real ice cream in our lab, giving us the opportunity to study the colligative property of freezing point depression. The formula seen here helped us learn the patterns of temperature change in freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. Colligative properties result from solutes interfering with the boiling and freezing processes. We examined the three primary models of acids and bases, the Bronsted-Lowry model, the Arrhenius model, and the Lewis model. We investigated how to name binary acids and oxyacids and how to both measure and calculate pH. The pH scale goes from 0 to 14, with 0 to 7 representing acids and 7 to 14 representing bases, also called alkali. A value of 7 on the pH scale means the solution is neutral. Our pH measuring tools were as sophisticated as digital electronic probes and as simple as litmus paper and red cabbage juice. Our performance task for this unit was the planning and carrying out of a titration procedure, allowing us to determine the concentration of an acid or base of unknown concentration, a very common tool in industrial applications. And finally, we invited Winston Eason, an expert in the manufacturing of fertilizer, to help summarize all of these ideas and confirm our understanding of why chemical reactions are important. And join us for the next video on the Unit 12 playlist, a recap of Unit 8, Thermodynamics. I'll see you there.